this lesson, I'm just going to take you through the proof of one, two, three, four, five, six trig identities. And to prove all six of these trig identities, we're going to use the identities we learned throughout this unit. So this is our identity page. In this unit, we've looked at reciprocal identities, quotient identities, even odd identities, the Pythagorean identities, transformation identities, cofunction identities, compound angle identities, and double angle identities. So we have a lot of identities here on this page that you can use to help prove these six identities we're going to go through. So each time I use an identity, I'll tell you which one I'm using, and I'll reference that sheet when we need to. So example one, let's prove sine of 2x divided by 1 plus cos of 2x equals tan x. So apparently, if this is an identity, and it wouldn't matter what you plugged in for x, the left side would always be equal to the right side. So to prove that, we separate into left side, right side, and uncover there, in fact, the exact same expression on both sides of the equation. So we'll separate into left side, right side. And now that they're separated, we work with both sides completely separately and use other identities we know are true to show that these are in fact the same expressions. On the left side, I notice I have two double angle functions. I have a sine of 2x and a cos of 2x. So I'm going to use my double angle identities to rewrite those. Sine of 2x I know is equal to 2 times sine x times cos x. And in the denominator, I have 1 plus cos of 2x. Well, there are actually three versions of the cosine double angle identity. If we look here, you can see the three versions. I'm going to choose the one that is going to make it easiest to do my proof. I think I'm going to choose the middle one, cos of 2x equals 2 cos squared x minus 1. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to replace that cos of 2x with 2 cos squared x minus 1. Do you see why I chose that version of the double angle identity for cosine? Because in the denominator, I now have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So those are gone. So that works out nicely. Now, I could have made this work with any of the other versions of the double angle identity, but this one saves me the most amount of steps. So all I have left in the denominator is 2 cos squared x. And that simplifies nicely because I have factors of 2 in the numerator and denominator. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I can cancel those. And this factor of cosine can cancel with one of those factors of cosine. So all I'm left with on the left side of the equation is sine x over cos x. And in the proof of this identity, I could then either rewrite that as tan based on the quotient identity, or over here, I could rewrite that tan as sine x over cos x. Wouldn't matter. Either way, I've shown you that the left side and right side are in fact the exact same expressions. They're true for all values of x, which means it's an identity. The left side is always equal to the right side. So let me just jot down what rules I used here. So to get from the first line to the second line, I used my double angle identities. And over here, to get the first line to the second line, I used the quotient identity. So if you want to look back at the identity page at any time, you can see which, which rules I used. Let's try another one, example two. So let me start by separating to left side, right side. If I want to prove left side is always equal to right side for any value of x, I need to work with these sides separately and show they're the same expression. On the left side, I have a compound angle, so I could use the compound angle identity. If I have cosine of a sum of two angles, let's look at what the compound angle identity is for cosine. Cosine of a sum of two angles tells me you do cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. It doesn't matter what those first and second angles are. I can just follow that pattern. This will simplify to cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And now I have a couple of trig expressions in here that I could actually evaluate. And if you know your unit circle, these would be really easy to evaluate, right? Unit circle, I know that if I know where a terminal arm intersects the unit circle, I know the cosine and sine ratio for that angle. So for example, if I rotate pi over two, the terminal arm would be intersecting the unit circle at this point right here, the point zero, one. The y coordinate tells me the value of the sine ratio for that angle, so sine of pi over two is one, and the x coordinate tells me the cosine ratio, so cos of pi over two is zero. Now you could just type cos pi over 2 and sine pi over 2 on your calculator. As long as you're in radian mode, it'll tell you what the values of the ratios are. But if you know your unit circle, we don't have to worry about typing it in. Cos of pi over 2, that's 0. And sine of pi over 2, that's 1. 
and zero times cos x is zero, so all I'm left with is negative one times sine x, which I could just write as negative sine x, which is the exact same thing as we have on the right. So I can say left side equals right side. Example three, let me separate. And now let me show that these are equivalent to each other. Now, a good tip, if you have any reciprocal trig functions, change them to primary trig functions. So I'll rewrite cosecant of 2x. Well, cosecant of anything is equal to 1 over sine of that same angle. So 1 over sine of 2x. And over here, I'll rewrite that cosecant as 1 over sine. So cosecant x becomes 1 over sine x. And that's all over 2 cos x. And if you want to think of that 2 cos x as 2 cos x over 1, that may help you when you look at my next line. When dividing fractions, you flip and multiply. So it would become 1 over sine x times 1 over 2 cos x. And then I could combine those together by multiplying the numerators. 1 times 1 is 1. Denominator, I have sine x times 2 cos x. I could write those three factors in any order. So why not 2 sine x cos x? And notice on the left side, what's the denominator? It's a sine double angle. The identity for sine double angle is 2 sine x cos x. And that's exactly what I have on the right side. So this one's already done. Left side equals right side. Example four. Let me start by separating again. Okay, the left side, uh, nothing really I can do to that that's going to make it any simpler than just cos x. So I'm going to start working on the right side. I see I have a function that's not sine or cos. So usually it's helpful to try and rewrite things in terms of sine or cos. So I'll use the quotient identity to change that tan x to sine x over cos x. Right, that's the quotient identity. And now I have 1 over cos x. And if I do my multiplication, if I do sine x times sine x over cos x, remember this sine x is really a sine x over 1, if that helps. So when I multiply the numerators, I get sine squared x. Multiply the denominators, 1 times cos x is cos x. Notice these fractions already have a common denominator, so I could combine them together and get 1 minus sine squared x over that common denominator cos x. And 1 minus sine squared x that's a rearranged Pythagorean identity. 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cos squared x. And cos squared x, remember, means cos x times another cos x. So one of those factors will cancel with that cos x. And all we're left with is cos x. And that's exactly what we have on the left side. So this is an identity. Left side equals right side. Example 5. This one probably looks the most complicated so far, but it's actually not too bad. Let me start by separating. Okay, on the right side, I mean, I could use the double angle identity and rewrite sine of 2x as 2 sine x cos x, but I don't think I'm going to bother doing that because on the left side, it's actually going to simplify to this pretty quickly. Now on the left side, there would be ways to do this very complicatedly. Like we could use the double angle identity for tan, but I think it would be a lot easier if you notice on, we have two terms here, a term here and a term here. Both terms have a tan of 2x. Let's common factor that out. So I'll common factor out a tan of 2x from both terms. And when I do that, the first term divided by tan of 2x would just be 1, minus the second term divided by tan of 2x would be 2 sine squared x. Oh, and 1 minus 2 sine squared x? That's a cosine double angle identity. See it there? 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals cosine of 2x. So I'm going to repla replace that with cos of 2x. So I've got tan of 2x times cos of 2x. And tan, if we know the quotient identity, tan of anything is equal to sine of that same angle divided by cosine of that same angle. So tan of 2x equals sine of 2x over cos of 2x. And that's being multiplied by cos of 2x. So I have a factor of cos of 2x being divided by cos of 2x. Those cancel because something divided by itself is 1. And all I'm left with is sine of 2x, which is exactly what I have on the right side of this equation. So this equation is an identity. The left side equals the right side. Last one. Let me start by separating.
Okay, so there's a lot we're going to have to do to prove this one. On the left, let me start by just using my compound angle identities for cosine. So cos of x minus y would equal cos first angle, cos second angle, plus sine first angle, sine second angle. And this is all over cos of x plus y, which if I use the compound angle identity for that, it goes to cos first angle, cos second angle, minus sine first angle, sine second angle. Now I'm going to move to the right side. So on the left side, I have functions of sine and cos. And on the right side, I have tan functions. So let me change all of those tan functions to sine over coses, right? That's the quotient identity. So I could rewrite this, the numerator, as 1 plus sine x over cos x times sine y over cos y. And in the denominator, 1 minus sine x over cos x times, once again, sine y over cos y. And on the right, I have uh, 1 plus a fraction. So I'm going to combine that one with that fraction. So I'm going to rewrite that one with a common denominator as this fraction here. And its denominator would be cos x cos y. So I'm going to rewrite that one as cos x cos y over itself to make it be 1. And that's being added to this product, which is sine x sine y over cos x cos y. I'll do the same thing in the denominator, right? So this was the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to rewrite that one again as cos x cos y over itself. Minus the product of those two fractions, which is, once again, sine x sine y over cos x cos y. Now that's my denominator. Now in the numerator and denominator, I have fractions being added that have common denominators, so let me combine them. Okay, so in both the numerator and denominator, I just combine the fractions. And when dividing fractions, you flip and multiply, and what would happen is, since these are both cos x cos y's, they would cancel out, and we'd be left with cos x cos y plus sine x sine y over cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. Which, if we look way back up, is exactly what we have on the left side. So we have finally proven this identity. We could say left side equals right side. Now for this one, if you can think of an easier way to do this one, make sure you let me know, leave it in the comments. Tell me an easier way to do this one because this is quite a few steps, but I haven't found an easier way to do this one yet. Okay, so we've practiced six identities. I think they got progressively harder. Make sure you try the practice questions. There's lots of identities for you to practice. The best way to get good at proving identities is just practicing a ton of them.